Ranking queries is a really an exciting new feature in T-SQL. A lot of times we're going to get data that comes in completely unordered. And really when we pull it back out and we look at it and see inside of SQL Server Management Studio, we'll end up seeing our table come back and we'll see all of our fields showing up in it. And over here on the left side, we see the numbers one through whatever the last row is. But if you actually try to copy that or actually bring it into, say, a .NET application, those row numbers do not show up. That is a benefit of the IDE, not of the result set. So how do I order or group information together? Well, there's really four new functions that are pretty similar in concept to each other. And we call them the ranking or windowing queries. and allows us to order information together. Row number will do exactly that. It will create a row number based upon however we order our data and populate it one through the number of items. Now, this is assuming that some of the data might be duplicated. Some of the data may even be uh, completely unique. Doesn't matter. What we'll do is st state in our select statement which column or set of columns we want to reorder by doing an over clause, an O-V-E-R. And we'll see that in the demonstration in a second. But what if we actually have data that's duplicated? Then we can set it up for a rank. If we take a look at some like baseball teams that maybe your children are in or soccer or football, then you might have teams that tie in a conference for second, third, or fourth place. And if I have 10 teams and I have one that was obviously number one, and then I have two that score for second place, what is the fourth team in rank ranking? Are they the fourth rank or are they the third rank since they didn't tie for second? Well, using rank would make them the fourth one. So I'd have in a list one, two, two, four. A dense rank actually gets rid of the jumping and makes sequential numbers. I'd have one, two, two, three, and that's a dense rank. Now the end tile helps us be able to define how we might group teams into categories based upon their rankings. In this case, if I had 10 teams and I want to break them up by the top 25 and the mid 25 and the lower mid 25 and the bottom 25, I could actually get a ranking that would actually show somewhere for intile. For example, if we have that many, we'd have probably three that would be number one. We'd have another three that could be number two three more that would be the third, and then the last one, fourth, would be our last percentage. Now, it makes it difficult to break it up evenly when you have numbers that are not factors into whole numbers based upon your percentage or your end tile that you set. But it works out pretty well to give you some ideas. Let's take a look at how we can use some of these functions. In this demonstration, we're going to look further at the ranking functions that we've spoken about earlier on in the course and see how they can benefit us in making decisions about our business. What I've got here is I'm going to take a look very quickly at the select all from sales.salesperson. And if we do a control E right here, we can see that we've got 17 rows where we have sales persons, their territories, what their sales quota was, their sales years to date, and their sale last year. What I really like to do is I'd like to be able to rank the sales rep by what they've done year to date and compare that possibly later, later with what they did last year and see how they uh, look in regards to performance plans. So we're going to come down here just a little bit and the first one that we're going to do is I'm going to select a salesperson ID, their territory and their sales years to date and then I'm going to rank it first by doing an over order by sales year to date this year. And then I want to see what their sales were for last year, descending rank last year. From sales person where the territory ID is not null, so I want to skip. Usually those are probably sales managers. They don't have a territory ID. And then we'll order by rank year to date. So I need to let them know at least which one I want to rank it by. So we'll highlight this and we run it. And here we go. We see our sales representatives. The first one has had a sales years to date of, what is that, about $5.2 million. That's a quite an improvement. They were actually our 11th salesperson last year. So they've done much, much better. Uh, number two has also seen improvement from being number nine. Three was number eight. 
We see fours holding about the same. Five slipped a little bit compared to last year. And then as we come down, we actually see that whoever was number 13, obviously he's had a very bad year and we might need to look at a performance plan for them or to help them to uh, do better because they've, they've shown to be very valuable in the past. All right, well that's good. What about looking at it a slightly different way? Let's take a look at it where we're ranking, let's go back up here, by the territory ID. And this time we'll sort it by the terri territory ID followed by the rank year to date. So we'll end up doing the same items right here, but this time we're gonna say partition by territory ID. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to group within a subgroup. And that's what this partition function allows us. We're going to take each territory ID and then rank the employees by year to date and by last year. Let's take this record right here that we've got. And let's copy these and let's go put this into a spreadsheet so that we can kind of see these side by side in a moment. We'll put those into Excel. And we'll just remember what the headers were. I'll actually show you away here in just a second how to put the uh, headers up at the top. Because if that has frustrated you in 2000, it sure has me. We'll put two there. And now let's go ahead and run this new query. We'll bring this down a little bit so you can see the query. There we go. And execute. Now notice this time, I'm ranking it first by territory IDs, and I'm seeing ranking year to date, one, two, and three, and then I start over for the next territory, and over for the next, and over for the next territory. And the same thing here and again and again. So we got it by territory IDs, and then we're ranking them year to date to last year. Now what if we want to be able to get these headers out? Do a right mouse click, and we can do like a save result to somewhere if we want. We can do a page setup. We can define our margins and all. But where we really want to go is go up here to our query. Go to our query options. And in our results grid, look at this one now. Include column headers when copying or saving the results. I like this a lot. Click OK, we'll highlight this part, click Copy, move over here to our Excel, and now when I hit Paste, ha ha, there are the columns. I know, you're probably going, I can't believe he's getting that excited about it, but trust me, I've wanted this one for years. So, so now we end up seeing those results a little bit different. Let's take a look at it another way of looking at our data. This time we're going to do some tiling. We're going to rank our individuals just as we've done by year to date, and then I want to group them into the top 25%, the mid 25s, both higher and lower, and of course the last one. And we'll do this by where the territory ID is not null. Highlight this one, execute it, and let's just copy and paste this over into Excel where we can see it a little bit easier. There we go. So here we are, we've got our sales ranking. This is our top 25%. Now notice that we have four right here. We've got four in the second group, three in the third, and, the four, and three again in the last quartile. So this allows you to have any number of tiles, quartiles, tri-tiles, whatever the appropriate words would be, but you can break your data up and therefore we can see very quickly these individuals right here are our top performing. They're the ones who are probably going to get the special trips and will take credit for anything and everything that a developer and database administrator has written. Doesn't that make you feel good? I guess maybe with that we should say that's the end of this demo.